Hi, welcome to Burbling class. <clears throat> Today's class is about earthquakes. So please log on to the class by clicking on the green join class button. That green button on your screen, go ahead and click it and join us here. Uh, we're, we're going to be talking about earthquakes today. They're a very uh, common natural disaster, in world, but certainly in more areas, in some areas more than others. And so we'll be talking about what earthquakes are and uh, why they happen. And we'll be talking about earthquake safety and some tips for staying safe if you are somewhere where an earthquake is happening. Um, so hi everyone, how's it going? Hi, it's going perfect. Hi, hello. Hello. Oh. Having a lot okay. of technical problems today, uh, worldwide. So uh, it's it's giving a lot of errors. So after a while, I was fortunately able to start class, but. Um, if you experience problem with verbling, it's because uh, Google is having some technical problems with their Hangout interface. But anyway, um, here we are. So we have, looks like, pretty much a full class. Um, so we'll go ahead and start. Um, so hi, my name is Libby. I am American, um, but I'm living in France at the moment, in northern France. Um, I don't really like the weather here because I used to live in California where the weather is better, but that's okay. Uh, the food is good here, so I'm happy. And um, today's class, we're going to be talking, like I said, about earthquakes. This was a suggestion that Huen gave me on my Facebook page. Um, so thank you, Huen, for the suggestion. And uh, for those of you who want to suggest more ideas for classes, you should like my Facebook uh, page. It's Facebook.com slash Libby Verbling, and I'll tell you again at the end. Um, but that's a good way to keep in touch with me. Um, okay, so I would like to meet all of you before we start today's class on earthquakes. So I would like to know um, your name, what country you are in, and um, I'd like to know um, just what time it what time it is there right now. So here in France, it is uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. And so I would like to let's see. Um, Abderrahman, can you go first? Hey, so uh, I am here also in France, and uh, it uh, it is about uh, yes, it's the same time I think. I'm in the north of France. But I'm originally from Mauritania. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> but I like the weather here. It's better than Mauritania. And and I why like why do you like it more? Do you you like the cold weather better? I think yeah. I see. <laughs> I see. Do yeah. you speak French? Yes, yes I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, j'en ai marre de de j'en ai marre de 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 temps chaud. Ah, ok, ok. Moi, j'en ai marre de, de ton foi. <laughs> <laughs> um, ok, cool, thank you. Um, next, we have um, Anatoly. Yes, um, hello. I'm Anatoly and I'm from Czech Republic. And we can study uh, English and France, no problem. All right, cool. <laughs> and at the moment, it's here 13 p.m. Yes. All right. Cool. So same same time. All right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next we have. Um, is it Her Hermine? How do I pronounce your name? Yeah, you pronounce it correctly. Okay. It's good. <laughs> I am Hermine from Armenia, and it's uh, four p.m. right now here. And I like French language too, so it's good. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm glad we have a lot of uh, French language fans. That's cool. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Huen. Hello. 
My name is Yuen. I'm from Vietnam, and at this moment is three, no, seven p.m. Okay, cool. And next we have um, Maher. I don't know if I pronounced it right, but are you here, Maher? All right. Um, you may not have a microphone, or it might not be working. So let us know if you get Hello. that started. Okay, Hello. there we go. Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, hi, everybody. I am Maher Nahlawi. I am from Syria. Uh, right now, I am working uh, in Saudi Arabia. I have graduated uh, from Al Bath University, Department of Translation. Just. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> All right, very cool. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Next, we have um, Marie. Are you with us, Marie? Okay, let me know. Um, I can't hear you, so let me know if you get your microphone started. Um, for now, we'll move on to uh, Servette. Yes, uh, hello everybody. I'm Sarit. I'm from Turkey. And the time is 10 past 2 in the afternoon. Oh, mm. yes, 10 past 2. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so one, one hour ahead of, of yep. me here in Europe. All right, cool. Thank you. And um, last, we have Vladimir. Hello, Libby. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm very glad to be here. This is uh, my first time at your class and I have already had a, a few classes before and uh, I find it great to have such an opportunity to speak with native English speakers. Uh, it's a bit more than 4 p.m. here in Russian. Oh, uh, I, am, I live in Russia. Uh, I didn't say, yeah. And uh, we have a very beautiful weather. Thanks a lot. Very cold. <laughs> yeah. Like also, what? Not so, not so cold. It's minus nine, uh, but it's... <laughs> it, it, no, no. <laughs> it's a warm day. It's a warm day at minus nine. Uh, to, to feel warm, uh, we uh, only should wear right clothes. And that is all. And it's sunny, it's not windy, and I love this kind of weather. Oh. Good. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I don't know. For me, minus nine is a little cold, but I like warm weather, so I'm picky. But you're right. If you have a good jacket, it's not so bad to be in the cold. Yes, you are right. Absolutely right. All right. Well, thank you so much, and welcome. I'm really glad that you're having a good experience with Verbling so far. I really love I really love teaching also, so I'm very happy to see all of you guys today as usual. Um, we had a couple people uh, have to, who had to leave the class, um, so I think we have a couple of new people. Um, Iris, are you here? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Iris. Uh, I'm from Taiwan. Um, uh, yes, this is the first time I am at uh, this class, and uh, it's uh, eight uh, twelve uh, p.m. here. So uh, it's very nice to see uh, you all. Okay, thank you so much, Iris. Thank you. And uh, I think we also have now Mustafa. Hello, teacher. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mustafa from Asia. Uh, the time now in Egypt, uh, 2 o'clock. Okay, cool. Um, thank you. And now that we all know each other, we can get started with today's class. Um, so today we're going to be talking about earthquakes. This is a very time topic um, because there have been a lot of earthquakes this past year, as usual. Um, and actually, I mean, obviously, earthquakes have been happening since the start of the Earth. You know, earthquakes have always been happening. But it's actually only in the last 100 years that humans have figured out what earthquakes are, why they happen, and figured out some ways to try to predict earthquakes 
and maybe even uh, you know increase people's safety for the future. So I think it's a really interesting thing to study. And uh, I'm going to give you guys an article, as I usually do in my classes, and we'll get some good information from the article and, and discuss what we think about it. Um, so first, I'm going to post the link uh, for you. My computer is frozen, as usual, but once it stops being frozen, I'll send it to you. I, for the yeah, for those of you who don't know, I have a very old computer, and it uh, it doesn't it doesn't like me very much. I don't think it's my friend, um, so it always gives me trouble. All right, here we go. I think I got it. Um, uh, okay, so there's the link. Um, so please open up this article, and we're just going to read through uh, this part of it, and then we'll talk about what you guys think. Um, this is from a website that I use sometimes in my classes. Um, it's called HowStuffWorks.com. So if you ever wonder about how anything works, this website probably has an article about it. It just explains a lot of science topics, but also a lot of just every, everything you could ever want to know about. Um, they have all kinds of content on here. So this is their article about earthquakes, and I think it's pretty good and it explains sort of what earthquakes are. So before we start reading the article, uh, can someone tell me what is what is an earthquake? What is What does it mean? What does earthquake mean? What is that? The ground is shaking. Good, okay, quite simply, it's when the ground shakes underneath you, okay. Um, what are some of the problems that earthquakes cause for humans? Why are earthquakes problematic? Destruction. Yeah, destruction, okay? It destroys people's houses, um, and it can cause a lot of damage to people's property, yeah. And okay. people people even might be killed because of earthquakes. Exactly, yes. Earthquakes, uh, de death results from earthquakes all the time. Um, good. Earthquakes can be a, a threat to human life. Okay, what else? Um, how about tsunamis? Earthquakes can cause, uh, but what is a tsunami? What's a tsunami? A, a big, a big wave. Yeah, a big wave. In um, the ocean. Yeah, a big wave in the ocean that often can also destroy people's property. Very high, very high waves, very hard waves. Uh, that destroy buildings and uh, maybe even uh, the whole cities when uh, if they are situated near the sea. Yes, good, exactly, perfect. Um, so earthquakes can also cause fires. Um, so fires can al also result in a lot of destruction and loss of life. Um, so earthquakes can be very serious. Um, do all earthquakes cause damage? No. 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 Earthquakes are not always bad. Earthquakes can be very small to the point where we don't even really feel them at all. Um, how do we measure how big an earthquake is? How do we measure the magnitude? The Richter scale. Yes. Okay. So the magnitude um, is measured using the Richter scale, um, which we can talk more about later. But the Richter scale, I think, goes from 1 to 10. And it's a measure of the magnitude of the seismic waves that are involved in the earthquake. So, um, OK. So why don't we, now that we've talked about some basic stuff, why don't we read through this article and uh, see what this website has to say about earthquakes. Um, so. I'll share the I'll screen share the website for you, and uh, oh, maybe I won't. Okay, there it is. So this is the article "How Earthquakes Work," and the first paragraph it says "Earthquake Facts." Technically, an earthquake is a vibration that travels through the Earth's crust. Quakes can be caused by a variety of things, including meteor impacts and volcanic eruptions, and even sometimes man-made events like mine collapses 
and underground nuclear tests. But most naturally occurring earthquakes are caused by movement of pieces of the Earth's surface, which are called tectonic plates. We'll learn more about those plates on the next page. So, like this paragraph says, uh, earthquakes can have a variety of causes, but mostly they're caused by the tectonic plates of the Earth's crust when they shift, and that makes the ground shake. Um, does anyone have vocabulary questions about that paragraph? Any words you don't know? Yeah, many words. Okay, all right. Let, well, which, what are some examples? What are some words that you would like to know in that paragraph? What, what are some words you would like me to explain? Maybe occurring, occurring and good. It quakes. How it's uh, pronunciation? It quakes or? Earth, earthquake. Earthquake. Yes, it's pronounced earthquake. 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 Yeah. And before earthquake is occurring, and I don't know what does mean occurring. Uh, and happening. to occur, yeah, to occur means to happen. Um, so occur means happen. So naturally occurring means that it happens naturally. It happens because of nature. It just happens. Uh, no one does anything. It just happens. So naturally occurring means it's because of nature. It just it just happens. So, uh, what other words? Uh, there is a word uh, which. Uh attracted my attention uh, it's tectonic tectonic uh, plates good tectonic plates because I uh, know a, muse, a song with uh, the, the same <laughs> the same title tectonic oh interesting okay so tectonic plates yeah. are the name of the plates of um, of rock that cover the earth's surface um, I'll, I'm going to look at the next page really quickly. The next, the next page of this article has a description of what tectonic plates are, but I think it's a little bit complex. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh. So basically, so basically um, let's talk about how the Earth is structured. So the Earth has a core in the middle. Um, in the, at, the, at the Earth's core, is the Earth solid or liquid? Liquid. liquid. It's liquid. So the Earth has what we call molten core, and it's very hot in the middle of the Earth. It's hot and it's liquid. And then as we go out from the Earth's core, the Earth gets cooler. The rock gets cooled down. And finally, when you get to the Earth's surface, here we are, and that's where we live, and it's not nearly as hot as the center of the Earth. And so because the middle of the Earth is liquid, the, the plates, these, these pieces of the Earth's crust that are made of rock, that are solid, they float on top of it. So actually, the whole Earth's crust floats on top of the liquid core like a boat, you know, just it floats on top. Um, so tectonic plates are the names of all of these pieces of rock that are floating on top of the Earth's liquid center. So it's a little bit complicated, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but basically you can think of this the Earth's crust of you know the outside of the Earth as a bunch of puzzle pieces. It's all these puzzle pieces of rock. It's like a puzzle, and they're all connected, but when they sometimes they move around and they shift a little bit. Mm. And they shift because they're floating on top of liquid, on top of this molten core that we have at the center of the Earth. Mm. So that's why these, um, these plates can move, and that's why we get earthquakes, because when they grind up against each other when they move, that results in the ground shaking. Can I say, the, can I say a point? Yes, please. Uh, I heard that America and Euro Europe are getting closer to each other uh, each year, maybe millimeter by millimeter, and so we are getting closer to each other. We are in Europe, and you are in uh, oh, you are in France now. Yes, currently, but uh, maybe other um, 
people in America. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure that's true. You hear about um, what what that's called? Is it? It's called a converging plate boundary. It's um, moving. So it's it's moving of uh, continents. It's uh, it's on. It's just moving. Uh, I speak. I am speaking about moving, and uh, <laughs> we are getting closer. Maybe uh, not in the best way to to be closer to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, the reason that that happens is because we're on top of a plate, and Europe is on top of another plate, and these plates meet underneath the ocean. Underneath the ocean is the plate boundary. It's where the plates meet each other, and sometimes when plates meet they go like this and they actually end up melting back into the molten core so you can imagine here's the American plate and the European plate and then underneath the ocean when the plates do this you can see that that brings America and Europe closer together <laughs> so, uh, so yeah we are, we are actually moving all of, the, all of the continents are moving which is kind of strange to think about but yes that is, that is happening uh, okay, so let's continue on with this article. Uh, oh, somebody asked earlier, I had a question in the chat about uh, volcanic eruptions. Um, what, are, what are volcanic eruptions? Um, a volcano is a mountain, usually, or a hill, and there's, I guess, sort of a hole in the, in the top of it, and it can have lava that comes up from the Earth's molten core and comes up and explodes out the top of the volcano. So if you look up uh, Google Images, you know, you can find an image of a volcano. So a volcanic eruption is when a volcano spews out lava out the top. And so volcanic eruptions can also cause earthquakes. And um, obviously volcanic eruptions are kind of scary, you know, they're kind of something that we see movies about and it's kind of it's it freaks me out you know uh, something like Pompeii where it can kill a lot of people um, but volcanic eruptions are less common than earthquakes um, but one one big uh, an example is one big volcanic eruption was in Pompeii Italy and that in that eruption the lava covered the whole town and a lot of people died um, in America, we have a volcano called Mount St. Helens in Washington State, and that one, it hasn't erupted in a while. It's, it's a dormant volcano, but um, does anyone else, do any of you have a volcano in your country that's famous? Do you have any volcanoes in your country? No. Okay. The United States has volcanoes. Um, Europe doesn't really have them. A lot, and then um, Iceland has some volcanoes, and I'm sure I'm not sure where in Asia there are volcanoes, but they definitely in exist. Asia in uh, China. I think Japan. China. Okay, cool. China, so, yeah, Japan, China, Japan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So um, good. Okay, so let's move on to the second paragraph of this article. It starts by saying the U.S. Geological Survey. Um, who would like to read that paragraph for us? Which one? The second paragraph here that starts with the U.S. Geological Survey. I can. Okay, go ahead. The, the U.S. Geological Survey estimates that each year there are as many as 1.3 million quicks with a magnitude greater than 2.0. The threshold at which humans can feel the vibration, the vast majority of them are very small, and many occur in remote areas far from people, so we don't usually even notice them. The earthquakes that capture our attention are the rare big ones that strike near heavily populated areas. Such earthquakes have caused a great deal of property damage over the years, and they claimed many lives. Over the last decade alone, earthquakes and the tsunamis, our avalanches and landslides caused by them have killed three, uh, 688 
thousand people around the world. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So there's a lot of really good information in this paragraph. Um, first of all, there are, there are 1.3 million quakes with a magnitude greater than two every year. Uh, I think I read somewhere that that there's an earthquake every 11 seconds. So we have a lot of earthquakes worldwide. And most of them are small, but some of them are larger, and those are the ones that catch our attention. Um, I wanted to go over, we talked about what an earthquake is. We talked about what a tsunami is. Um, what about avalanches? What is an avalanche? <laughs> when a large amount of snow slides down the hill. That's exactly right. Yeah. So an avalanche is when a lot of snow slides down a mountain. And what about a landslide? What's a landslide? Same thing, but uh, is the uh, soil. Good. Land. Okay. So, so a landslide is when a lot of soil or rock, you know, when the when the earth uh, slides down the mountain. Uh, why are avalanches and landslides dangerous for people? Because if you it demolishes the buildings, and if you uh, stay under them, uh, or if you stay the way they will pass by you may hurt. Yes, that's exactly right. So avalanches and landslides destroy buildings, they demolish buildings, and they also can bury people. Um, the verb bury, B-U-R-Y, that means to cover up with something. So in an avalanche you can get buried in the avalanche, and uh, you, can, you can die if you get buried in an avalanche or in a landslide. So that's why uh, we try to avoid those kinds of natural disasters because um, they can be very, very dangerous. Um, I, I'm a skier. I like to alpine ski. And so I'm always very careful about avalanches when I go skiing. Um, skiers die every year because of avalanches because when you go skiing and when you go down the mountain, you might disturb the snow and... Once you ski on it, if you sort of dislodge it and disturb it, it can slide down and t it will just take you down with with it, and it, you can become buried in the avalanche. So, um, does anyone else ski? Does anyone else go skiing? No, we don't have it here in Brazil. I don't try ski, but uh, I try snowboard. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. My little sister snowboards. She really likes it. No, that was something like tobacconing. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's more yeah. sledding. Yeah, sledding. Yeah. I like, I like skates. I like skates. Skates is good. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. Lots of good winter activities. Sledding, skating. Um, does anyone... Um, what else? Does anyone go uh, snowshoeing? You put on those big snowshoes and you walk through the snow? No. Anyone do that? No. I used to, where I grew up in a place with a lot of snow, and so we would, to get exercise, we would go snowshoeing and we would walk in the snow with these big, big shoes on uh, that keep you from sinking in the snow. So, uh, or there's also cross country skiing where you, it's skiing but it's flat, um, so you just, skate along on the snow and I like cross-country skiing but it's it's very hard work it's a lot of exercise so um, it's a good workout but if you're lazy it's not a good idea <laughs> um, yeah yeah Sergio says never never seen snow yeah that's interesting I uh, I know a lot of people who have, have never seen it and it, I've seen it every year of my life I've seen a lot of snow snow <laughs> is great Yes. Yeah, I love snow. It's wonderful. Okay. Except, except when it's an avalanche and then it's bad. Um, so what other questions do you have about the second paragraph? What questions do you have about this?
Maybe magnitude. Okay, oh. magnitude. Good. Magnitude means how big something is. So um, if you say, um, usually it's it's used in in kind of in mathematics, um, or yeah, it's used in math and science a lot. So if you say the earthquake had a large magnitude, that just means it was big. It was, it was a large earthquake. And so um, the magnitude of earthquakes is measured with the Richter scale, like we talked about before. Um, so when you say a magnitude greater than two, that means that it measures more than two on the Richter scale. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, Sergio asks in the, ch in the typing box, uh, what's a sea quake? Uh, I would guess that that's when there's an earthquake underneath the ocean and it makes the water rough, but I don't know. I've never heard that word before, so I'll have to look it up. I'm not sure. All right, any other questions about what we've talked about so far? All right, awesome. Next, we'll move on and learn about uh, the most deadly earthquake in history. Um, you'll see the word lethal in this paragraph. It's the same thing as deadly. It kills a lot of people. Um, so who would like to read this third paragraph here? It starts with... Can the... I? Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Um, perhaps the most lethal quake in history had a magnitude of eight and struck China's Shanxi province in 1556. According to the historic accounts, city halls, temples, government buildings and houses all crammed, and more than 850,000 people were killed. A scholar named Qin Keda, who survived the, survived the quake, later provided what may have been the first earthquake prepared delays advised in history at the very beginning of the earthquake. People indoors should not go out immediately, he recommended. Just crouch down and wait for chances, even if the nest is collapsed. Some eggs in it may still be kept, kept intact. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So this is the most lethal earthquake in history. It killed more people than any other earthquake. Um, and it had a magnitude of eight, which is, which is huge. Um, it says city walls, temples, government buildings, and houses all crumbled. What does crumbled mean? Full down. Damage. Yeah, it's a uh, crumbled literally means it falls to pieces. So when I, when you eat a cookie, um, it's it's we call them um, we say that the cookie crumbles. That means when a cookie breaks into little tiny pieces like that. Um, and so when you say that a building crumbles, it literally means it just it collapsed and fell to pieces. Like you know, if you had a cookie in your hand and you just crushed it like this. So crumbled, yeah, and good. When makes the point breadcrumbs. So those little pieces of bread like this, we call them breadcrumbs. And so when buildings crumble, they become little crumbs. They be become nothing. So all of those buildings crumbled. They were completely destroyed. All right. Um, what else? So then this this scholar who survived the earthquake, he gave the first. Uh, earthquake preparedness advice in history. Um, what does preparedness mean? When you are prepared to something. Yeah, it, preparedness is like being prepared, being ready for something. Yeah. So we say a lot uh, like disaster preparedness. And that just means you're making sure to be ready in case something bad happens. And so this scholar in 1556 wrote the first earthquake preparedness advice. Um, what, what's his advice? What should you do if an earthquake starts to happen? What does he say is the question? People thing? indoors should not uh, get out immediately. Good. Okay, so stay indoors. Don't leave. Don't go out. 
And uh, what else? Stay inside and screaming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's. I'm. Su I'm sure that's allowed. <laughs> screaming is definitely okay if you're in an earthquake. Um, yeah. He says, crouch down. Crouch down is when you do this. Just crouch down and wait for chances. So just just crouch like this and wait out the earthquake. So, and I like this analogy uh, that he says, even if the nest is collapsed, some eggs in it may still be kept intact. What does what does that what does that mean? Why is that an analogy to earthquakes? Even if the house is destroyed, somehow maybe there should be p uh, people living, live people, live people be there inside. Exactly. Good. So even if the house gets destroyed there will hopefully still be living people inside. Just the way that if a bird's nest is destroyed, it's still possible that some of the eggs could still be intact. They could still be okay. All right, cool. So that was a, an important historical earthquake. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit more about earthquake uh, survival and preparedness. Um, I have another article that I just posted for you guys. Um, so I wanted to know, has, have any of you ever been in an earthquake? Yep. Yes. yes. I've been. Maybe one week ago. Okay, <laughs> wow, so that's, a, that's a lot of people. Um, so, Sarah, can you tell me about um, the, the biggest earthquake that you've been in? Have you ever been in an earthquake that's caused any damage or that did anything substantial? Uh, maybe like 10 years ago. Mm, it was a big earthquake. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the apartment uh, I live in was uh, a new apartment and it was built uh, that can stand earthquakes. Uh, so it, uh, it didn't get damaged. But uh, it was very big and other people uh, who live uh, who live in old buildings uh, were killed. Also, people were killed, and we uh, after th that it was night. It was night. Yes, yes. it happened at night. Uh, we went outside. We like maybe one week or more. Uh, we slept outside. Uh, wow. And one I think one week ago in a class, uh, I experienced that tremor. <laughs> Little tremor. I was in the class. Yeah. Yeah. It was a small one. It was a small one. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the apartment building because it's true that a lot of buildings now are being built to withstand earthquakes. They're being built yeah. so that they do not collapse during earthquakes. Um, I know that in San Francisco there is the, the Transamerica building, and it's a building that's shaped in a triangle like this, yeah. and so uh, it's supposed to resist earthquakes. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of other buildings like that as well, uh, but that's an example that I that I've seen. Um, okay, who who else has has been in an earthquake? I know someone else. Several other people said they have. I can tell my experience. Okay, yeah. Why don't you tell your story? Yeah, I've been experienced earthquake once, and it was very small one. And at the moment, I thought I felt uh, dizzy because the house was moving a little bit, but I, I thought it was sick, but it turned out it was an earthquake. Wow, interesting. And how long did it, how long did it last for? Like four or three seconds. <clears throat> um, okay, who else can tell an earthquake story? I can. Okay, all right, <laughs> Vladimir, go ahead and then we'll do it. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Uh, as a child, I lived in Uzbekistan, uh, not in Russia, and uh, I've been in several uh, earthquakes, uh, but they uh, were not hard, uh, maybe uh, a few points by Richter scale. Uh, only moving port plants, uh, uh, trembling of glasses, but uh, I was very scared. I was a child, and uh, uh, I knew a few rules. Uh, don't use a lift, for example, and uh, um, 
there was uh, one thing uh, that we uh, that we did. Uh, if we can, if we could not go out of building, uh, we usually stayed uh, under doorway. Uh, it is supposed to be uh, more safe. Uh, say is more safe than uh, being uh, something uh, being somewhere else uh, but um, I've heard about uh, one hard earthquake in Tashkent in 60s uh, from my parents and uh, in that earthquake uh, many a lot of buildings were destroyed uh, I don't exactly know about uh, how many people were killed but uh, I guess a lot yeah, wow. Interesting, really interesting. And yeah, the the doorway thing, that's the that's the only thing that I knew uh before I looked at this website. I just knew that you're supposed to stand in a doorway because it's it's supposed to be safer because it's less likely that something can fall on you. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Okay, uh who else uh wanted to tell a story? There was Can I? Yes, yeah, go ahead, you. <laughs> yes, um, I just remember the lyrics um, of the biggest earthquake in, happened in Sichuan province in 2008. Um, it's a big, big earthquake, but in my town, it just feel a little. Uh, feel a little shock, but I know many people dead, and uh, um, the whole of China feel the ground shake, and many buildings and something like that is destroyed. Um, yes, that it's really very big, and um, I just remember it's really very bad memory. Yeah, so. It's, Yes. Were you were you afraid during it? Did you were you worried while no. it was happening that no? Because you knew it was small enough for you that it was okay. I just, yeah, yeah, it's small for me. But um, but after that, our teaching building also have some problems, so we have a long vacation. But um, I, because it's in my province, so I know many people dead, and uh, it just like happened around me. So yeah. it's really. Uh, Bad memory. Many people die. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's that's really scary. But yes. I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad that you that you are okay. Obviously, but yeah, these things I'm can okay. be very. Yeah, these things can be very. I just intense. think it's very sad because yeah. it's a really, um, hard time. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, okay. Does anyone else have something they want to share? Oh yes. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Iris. Uh, yes, uh, we uh, we had a very heavy earthquake in 1999 um, in Taiwan, and uh, uh, we lost uh, the power for many days, and uh, uh, some buildings and uh, houses were damaged, and uh, hundreds of people were uh, dead. In this um, heavy uh, dialist. dialist. Wow, and and were you, but you but you and your family were okay in your yes, in your we are sad. Well, that's good. Yes. Yeah, it's it's really incredible to hear this from you guys because I've when I lived in California there were earthquakes but I never felt one. Um, uh -huh. They're always very very small and. It's it's fascinating to hear how you know how much it affects people's lives in places where they have really big earthquakes. Yes, and that were the big news. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's very very heavy. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Anyone else want to share their experience? Uh, I want to say only uh, some people done some advices. Uh, I said uh, that I don't believe uh, on uh, in all of those things, because when, in my opinion, when there is a earthquake, I think uh, we should only go away. Uh, what 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 do you mean? You should only. You should only uh, skip. 
this is uh, uh, the one solution. I see. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you can you cannot. I mean, uh, you cannot uh, thinking about uh, uh, some advices like, for example, uh, I I don't know. There is some advices uh, you should you should be you should be how to say that you should be. Uh, I don't know how to say that, but uh, it is uh, inapplicable. Yeah, I think because I think you're scared and you, you cannot think about those things. Yeah, exactly. So so when so when an earthquake happens, it usually yeah. happens very fast. And yeah. so it's not like you're going to be like, okay, you know, item number one, make sure to do this. Item exactly. number two, do this. It's it's you're right, it's a it's a very um it's a very quick reaction that you need to have. Yeah. And so that's I think why we call it earthquake preparedness, because if you're properly prepared, then when it happens, maybe you're more likely to be okay. So if we look at this article I posted, um, it it talks about um, just I, I think the most helpful ones are anchor anchor heavy objects to the walls. So if you have a big bookcase or a big piece of furniture that could fall, you should make sure that it's you know anchored properly. Or attached properly to the wall, and also keeping heavy objects like relatively low. Um, I mean, again, it doesn't make a very big difference, but at least you have something. You know, at least you're decreasing your risk. And I agree. I think when an earthquake happens, you just sort of deal with it, and you know, and like it says in this article uh, in red, it just says uh, drop, cover, and hold. So that means uh, you should. That means you should crouch down. Uh, so don't don't stand up, but maybe crouch down on the floor, and cover your head, cover your face with your arms, and hold. That just means stay where you are until it's over. So, again, I mean, I agree. I think if if an earthquake is bad, there's not very much you can do about it. But this website at least gives some advice on. On how you should how you should do it, but I agree. I mean, a lot of the advice is kind of obvious. Like after an earthquake, it says uh, check for injuries and provide aid, and uh, you know I think that's kind of obvious. Does anyone know what first aid is? What's first aid? First aid, yeah. It says, it's like the thing that you use to use for injured people before. The ambulance come. Exactly. Good. First aid is when you help injured people before the ambulance comes. Um, so it's the first response. And at least in my house, I don't know about you guys, but we always had a first aid kit, it's like a little box that has like band aids and antiseptic and basic medical things in it in case we needed to, in case someone got hurt. Um, so first aid is when you help people uh, before the medical professionals get there. Frankly, I haven't it, but I will think about it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> good. Yeah, I mean, I think mo in in America, most families that have first aid kits, it's because they have small children, and children get in accidents a lot. You know, they fall or they run into something or something. So when I was a kid, you know, I would come. <laughs> crying back to my mother and she would go get the first aid kit and clean up my you know knee or whatever I had cut um, so I think for earthquakes it's not really that useful to have a first aid kit but for injuries in general it's especially for children it's nice to keep stuff I, I got a question yes uh, is it is truth that all the animals can predict an earthquake um, good question. I don't know. Uh, sometimes animals do have better senses than we do. Uh, they can sense things more easily, and so it's possible that um, animals have something that allows them to detect vibrations. So maybe if animals can feel very small vibrations, they could know before we know. 
um, whether there's going to be an earthquake. I know that I know that humans are working on like earthquake prediction technology, um, but I don't know a lot about it. I just know that we have some instruments that detect uh, vibrations, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how a lot of it works, but it's it's interesting anyway. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, okay. Does anyone have any more questions about earthquake preparedness or earthquakes in general? I can recommend you one uh, thing. Uh, you can live in Czech Republic because we haven't got here earthquake. So okay. it's a really safety place. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Okay. So the ultimate, the ultimate earthquake protection is to go live somewhere where they don't have any earthquakes. Yes. So, so Anatoly has generously offered the Czech Republic as an option. Um, I will yeah. also say that it's very nice here in France with no earthquakes as well. But then again, we have cold weather, and uh, so again, if if you're you know if you're like Vladimir and you like cold weather, then then. I'm living for Japan, safest place. Sorry, what did you just say? Japan, the safest place. Why? Why? Oh yeah, Japan. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> because, uh, the I mean, reason why? Uh, no, no, yeah. no. Uh, because they are prepared. Oh, I see. Because they get so many, they're now they're prepared. So, yeah, that's true. I guess Siberia is a rather safe place. Some people, some people say about this. Some scientists, for example, the because, part of Russia, Siberia, because because Siberia just doesn't have, does not have earthquakes. You mean? Uh, yes, uh, I, I I think so. Yes, this is because of uh, the the structure of the Earth, as you said, as you said, as you said. Yeah, but, because mm -hmm. because when you look at the tectonic plates and how they move. Um, you can see which areas are safe in the sense that they're not going to be affected by the way that the plates are moving. So I didn't know that Siberia was like that, but that's interesting. That's totally that's totally true. Um, you can you can look at how the plates are moving and see which places are safe and which places are not. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Any other questions or any anyone just have any any comments? Anything they want to say? No. Everyone's good? All right. Uh, cool. Well, I'll just end with one more quick comment then. Um, I just wanted to talk about the Richter scale quickly. The Richter scale is the scale that we use to measure the magnitude of earthquakes. Um, the Richter scale is what we call a logarithmic scale. Let's type it logarithmic. Logarithmic scale. And what that means is that when you go up one point on the Richter scale, you actually go up 10 times in magnitude. So an earthquake that scores 3 on the Richter scale is 10 times as strong or 10 times as severe as one that scores 2. So going up from 2 to 3 means it's 10 times more intense, 10 times the magnitude. Um, and that's why we use the Richter scale to measure it because earthquakes have a very big range. They can be really, really small or really, really huge. And so we use the Richter scale to capture that big range of, um, of magnitudes, of severity of earthquakes. So every time you go up a point, you go up to 10 times in magnitude. So what does that mean? If I go from a, a, a Richter scale of 4 to a Richter scale of 6, how many times stronger is the earthquake? 100. 100. Excellent. Good. So you multiply. Um, it's 100 times stronger because I went up by 2 points. What if I go from 4 to um, 8? 4 to 8. 10,000. Uh, 10, Good. 10,000. Uh, okay, what about what about from two to eight? Yeah, what about from two to eight? I think I'm, I'm, I'm doing it in my head too. <laughs> um, like, eh. Two to eight, six. 
It's ten. A million. One hundred thousand. Ten to the six would be a million. Is that right? Ten, no. Yeah. Yes. Because um, you're going up by six. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, so I think it's. I think. I think it's a million. So, so that earthquake in China in 1556 that we read about, um, that that was eight, and the smallest earthquakes that we feel are two. So, that earthquake was a million times stronger than those little tremblings that we feel a million times. So, um, I'm sure it would have been really incredible to be there at the time because it's it's a huge difference. So that's why we use the Richter scale because it helps us encompass a large range of earthquakes. Um, all right, so that's all that we have time for for today. Um, remember to like my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Libby Verbling so that you can communicate with me to suggest classes or ask questions. And I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, bye bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Bye. Thank you.